everyone and welcome to Cabin Fever Crochet with me Helene here for a little yarn on the lake before we get started with today's project. I have for you a lovely market bag, tote bag, yarn bag or whatever bag that I have designed. Actually, I started it a couple of years ago, just got around to finishing. And if this pattern looks a little familiar to you, well, yes it is, because it is my Whispering Willow uh, wrap scarf or cowl. I have both tutorials and a written pattern below for that in my Etsy shop. And I was looking at it and I thought, you know, this could make a pretty nice market bag. So I redesigned it a little bit to work into as such. So I'm going to go over a few of the specs and the yarn that I used and a few different things so that when you work it up, it'll help you decide how you want to customize that for yourself. And if you enjoy my content, please like, subscribe, and share. Well, this tutorial is a little bit longer. However, I have lots of tips and techniques, and I go through this with you step by step. This bag is worked in the round with an oval base, and it's very balanced and how I have the placement on everything. You have an optional cinch tie, which I prefer because that way you can open it nice and wide to put everything in, but then have more of a secure closure. It works really well. And I will show you that and get into it into the tutorial, but you just simply pull the strands or the two cords and then slide up the bead and this is a large hole bead as long as you can fit your two cords in there you'll be just fine you can purchase these at craft stores online and on this bag i have a wooden bead kind of a tapered shape of a pineapple it's carved and i got that at a bead store as far as yarn goes, I recommend a an average number four worsted weight. You can use a little bit lighter yarn. However, if you do, I suggest going with a little bit thicker yarn for the base, which I have done to give it more stability and structure and hold the shape and keep it from getting overstretched and giving a better base for the contents of your items and to where you don't have a lot of gap spacing in between the stitches. And you can combine different yarns. I have done that in this very bag. I'm going to show you what I used and let you know how much yarn also. Oh, and I do have time stamps below for each segment and also links to related content as well. And you can make this as tall as you like and you can make the strap as wide or as narrow as you like. On the lavender bag, I made it just two stitches narrow and that way you can decide, but these are thicker, more padded, so to give more comfort on the shoulders as well. And as far as yarn types, something that is smooth and doesn't fuzz out real easily because this is something that you know rubs against your body and um, also with the cinch ties you can see that it does cause a little bit of friction which will naturally cause the yarn to fuzz or pill. So I suggest if you have it or have access to it, a cotton or a cotton blend, some type of natural fiber blend you can have uh, cotton poly, cotton acrylic, Oh, a linen. Linen is very good. It can be a little bit prickly and coarse, but if your hands can handle that, a linen or linen blend because it's very strong and will help hold its shape, as well as hemp or hemp blend also, but something that isn't going to uh, stretch out too easily. And you can make this in a solid, a self-striping, variegated, or do a color blocking such as I have done in this bag. And for example, the yarns that I used for the body of this lavender bag and 
this entire bag i used lion brand comfy cotton this is a seven ounce 200 gram cake 295 yards um, i only used 2.5 ounces in this bag which i combined with another yarn and this is hobby lobby here in the united states their baby bee stork struck yarn and this is called sugar plum this lavender color and this is a 50 50 tensile acrylic blend and tensile is a plant fiber pulp and it's it's very strong and it's tightly spun as you can see and it's smooth so and that's your standard um 100 gram ball now if you were to get one large cake say of the lion brand comfy cotton or something equivalent and two of coordinating contrasting and another type of yarn then you could get two bags out of that this colorway is called flower garden and for the neutral bag i used driftwood cream for the cord with two strands and one strand each of driftwood and cream for the handle and i used a total of 5.65 ounces for the entire bag and that's including the little bead well, after I finished this bag, I kept looking and looking at it and didn't feel quite complete for me. So as usual, I had to add a little something extra and I put another trim around the top of the bag and both sides of the strap. Either way you work it is fine. The original, as I just showed you, is great. However, if you want to take it up another notch, then please stay tuned for my bonus companion video coming soon showing exactly what I did here and with even more fun techniques. So I do believe that I have covered everything. All right, so let's go on over, head on back and get started. Okay, here we go. Supplies, you will need two hook sizes and two stitch markers one to mark each end where we will make our increases. I recommend a five millimeter H hook for the base. So go down one size from whatever your yarn ball band recommends or use your own judgment on that because they can vary as you know some number three weights are more like a number four weight and vice versa. So you can play around, do swatches, see what you like best. All right, so the base of our work, a five millimeter H hook, and then optionally one hook size up, a 5.5 millimeter I hook for the body of the work. Depending on your yarn and how much that it lofts up or not, you may or may not want to go up one hook size for that. So when you finish the base, we get up to the body of the work. You can always test that out. All right, so make a slip knot and we are going to chain in multiples of six plus two. I recommend going with 18 and that is how this pattern is worked and the stitch count that I'm going to explain to you as we go. And after we've created the base of our bag, which is actually what takes the longest, then we go into the body of our bag in a fun and very easy four row repeat that works up quickly. Right, so go ahead and with your smaller hook size of the two, chain 18 plus two more. All right, so that gave me a total of 20 stitches and then we're going to be working into the back bumps across and this is worked in the round as we're going to start on our beginning chain and then we're going to rotate that work and work along the other side of the chain and then begin the round from there. All right, so in the fourth chain from the hook, roll your work over to that raised bump on the back and place two double crochets in there. The beginning skipped three chains do count as your first double crochet and then place one double crochet in each of the next 15 chains all the way across and that should bring you up to your very last 
and you will place six double crochets in the last. Grab your stitch marker and place one stitch marker in the first double crochet of that set of six and I will see you there. Now I'm at the end of my beginning chain and this is where we work six double crochet into that back bump of the very last. And then after you've made the first, get your first stitch marker and remember to place a stitch in that first set of six and that's where we will begin our increase at this end. Alright, so now five more. That's a total of six in the last stitch. Now we're going to work one double crochet in each of the next 15 double crochets across again on this side. So as mentioned, you just rotate your work. You stopped here with your last six double crochets, so just rotate it. You don't turn your work over. All right, and we're going to be working on the opposite side of the chain. That's why I wanted you to work in the back bumps because that gives you a nice full stitch, two loops to fit your hook into. So go ahead and double crochet into the next, which is just to the left of your beginning slip knot into the very next stitch. You can work over that tail a little bit if you like. Alright, so there's one into the next, two, three, okay, and keep going. Do a total of 15. And I'll see you at the end. I'm at the end of round one. So the very last stitch mirrors the first stitch on the opposite side of the chain. So here is your beginning chain three and in the loop, which is that beginning chain, going to work three double crochets. And in the first double crochet of that set of three, this is where you place your second stitch marker. Okay? And that is where we will work our second increase in the round. So each round is going to increase by a total of 12 double crochets and you will have six on one side and six on the other. and we will increase for a total of five rounds. Unless you want it a little bit wider, you can certainly do that and I'll explain what you do from that point on. And you should have a total of 42 double crochets at the end of round one, including your beginning chain three. After round one, your width should be approximately six to six and a half inches or 15 and a quarter to 16 and a half centimeters. Now these measurements are not critical, just gives you a general idea for an approximate 12 to 13 inch wide bag. So now we're going to slip stitch to the top of that chain three, which counts as that first double crochet. And you may either chain three again, which again here and throughout will count as your first double crochet or if you want a less visible seam going up and not have that string like effect of a less than a full stitch of those three chains, work an alternate double crochet instead. Do not chain one, just insert your hook back through that same stitch, the top of your chain three we just slip stitched into work a single crochet and then insert your hook into the left side of the loop, the front only, and work another single crochet and that is an alternate double. So whether you do the chain three or the alternate, 
you, that counts as your first double, go ahead and work one more double crochet into that very same stitch. That is your first increase, and now work two double crochets in each of the next two stitches. One, two, okay, and there's two, two. That's, that's how I keep the count in my head. You can do it however you like, whatever works for you. All right, now along this first side, we are going to work one double crochet in each of the next 15 stitches as we work our round two, all right, up to the stitch marker. Okay, one double crochet into the, each of the next 15. And I will see you at that stitch marker. Okay, here we are up to the first stitch marker on round two. Take that out for just a sec. Just make sure you put that back in. Now we are going to begin our first set of increases. We are going to work two double crochets into that stitch that had the stitch marker. And now you can put that stitch marker back into the first of those two. And then work two double crochets into each of the next five stitches. Alright, so that's one, two, 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 three, two, four, two, and five, two. Including the one with their stitch marker, that is a total of six increases. Now rotate your work again and work along this side one double crochet into each of the next 15 double crochets up to your second stitch marker and I will meet you there. And now here we are at the end of round two up to our second stitch marker and work two double crochets into that stitch with the stitch marker. Place the stitch marker back into the first of those two and then place two double crochets into each of the next Two. One, two, one, two. Okay. At the end of this round, round two, you should have 54 double crochets, including either your alternate or your chain three. Alright, so now for round three, again, slip stitch to either the top of your chain three or the top of your alternate double crochet and repeat that again either chain three or alternate okay place one double crochet into that same very first stitch and one double crochet into the next Two double crochets into the next, one into the next, and you're going to repeat that two one one more time, two into the next, one into the next, and then now work one double crochet in each of the next 15 double crochets across up to your first stitch marker. We are going to work two double crochets into the stitch with the stitch marker and one into the next. That was three total double crochets I just made so put the stitch marker back into that first double crochet 
of this set of two. Alright, now we are going to work again two into the next, one into the next, and repeat that one more time. Two double crochets into the next, and one into the next. And now we are going to do the same increase except we're going to reverse the order so that it, this side mirrors that side and gives more of a balance. So instead of continuing the two to one sequence on the other half, we're going to reverse that and we're going to work one double crochet into the next and two into the next. And then you repeat that two more times. All right. So one double crochet into the next, two into the next, and the last time one into the next, and two into the next. And then now here you work your 15 double crochets across, one double crochet in each of the next 15, up to our second stitch marker. And if you happen to forget to pop that stitch marker back in, just go back around and look and find where you began your first increase with the set of two double crochets. And then just put it back in there. Alright, so work your one double crochet in each of the next 15 and I will see you at the next stitch marker. Now we're finishing our last increases on the second half of around three up to our second stitch marker. Got hung up on there. All right, so now we are going to reverse the order that we began here, similar to what we did on the other side. Now we're going to work one double crochet in the stitch with the stitch marker. Two double crochets in the next. And you will repeat that two more times. One double crochet in the next, two in the next, one in the next, and two in the last. That completes round three and you should have a total of 66 double crochets including your beginning either chain three or alternate. Okay, here we go. Slip stitching into the beginning of either the top of your chain three or your alternate. Go ahead and work another chain three or alternate double crochet and one more double crochet into that very same stitch. So now, excuse me, we are working round four. All right, and this sequence will be two in the first and one double crochet into each of the next two. Repeat this two more times. Two double crochets into the next. There's one, and then one in each of the next two. Completes the second set. Your third set, two double crochets into the next, and one into each of the next two. And then again, as we've been doing, and we will continue. For the increase rounds of our base, work one double crochet into each of the next 15 up to the first stitch marker. Now take out your stitch marker for just a sec. So on round four, at the beginning of our first increase, you are going to work two double crochets into that stitch with the stitch marker. Placing your stitch marker back into the first of that set of two. And then now work one double crochet in each of 
the next two stitches, two double crochets into the next, one into each of the next two, and you will repeat that sequence one more time, two double crochets into the next, one into each of the next two. That completes the first half. Now for the second half, we are going to mirror that again by placing one double crochet into each of the next two and two double crochets into the next. And that sequence you will repeat two more times. One double crochet into each of the next two two double crochets into the next. And last time, one double crochet into each of the next two stitches, two into the next. And again, along the side, work one double crochet into each of the next 15 up to our second stitch marker. All right, here we are at the end of round four for the second half of our increase and we are going to mirror this side as we did over here at the other end. So instead of it was two double crochets followed by one in each of the next two, we're going to work one double crochet in each of the next two. Place your stitch marker back in and <clears throat> two double crochets into the next. Two more times, repeat that sequence, one double crochet into each of the next two, two double crochets into the next, one more time, one into each of the next two and two double crochets into the last, and that completes round four. You should have 78 double crochets. And now here we go on round five on the home stretch, our last increase round as usual. We're gonna begin just as we have been, which is slip stitching to the top of your alternate or your chain three and work either one of the two that you've been doing in that first stitch and one more double crochet into that same stitch and then now you're going to place one double crochet in each of the next three so you can see how our sequence is going here with each increase you add one more double crochet after your set of two. Alright, so now you will repeat that sequence two more times where you'll place two double crochet into the next, one double crochet in each of the next three. We'll do that one more time. two double crochets into the next, one in each of the next three, and then work your 15 double crochets, one in each of the next 15, up to your first stitch marker, and as usual, I will meet you there. Okay, up to our first stitch marker, and then here, yes, you will place two double crochets in the stitch that had the stitch marker. One double crochet in each of the next three. And even though this is my last increase round, I still put my stitch markers back in just in case I make a mistake. That way I know where I left off. All right, so now we're going to repeat this sequence again two more times. Two double crochets into the next, one in each of the next three. And 
more time, two in the next. One in each of the next three. And then just like we've been doing for the second half of this increase side, then we're going to reverse the order where we will start again with one in each of the next three. Two double crochets in the next. And repeat that sequence two more times. One in each of the next three. Two in the next. And one more time. One in each of the next three. And two in the next. And as you've probably guessed it by now, <laughs> or you know what we're going to do by now, that's right. Work your one double crochet in each of the next 15 up to our second stitch marker. At the end of row 5, the second half of our increase, I worked my 15 up to my second stitch marker. And now here where we do the reverse order of where we began. And we will continue with that one double crochet in each of the next three. And this is just my little extra precaution safety net measure here. Alright, and two in the next. Alright, one in each of the next three. Two double crochet in the next, and one more time. One in each of the next three. And that should bring you up to your last double crochet, place two there. And at the end of this round five, you should have 90 double crochets. I am going to slip stitch to the top of my beginning stitch. And then now for round six, which is just one double crochet in each stitch all the way around. And you want to maintain the stitch count of your last increase. And that is very important because it needs to be divisible by six. Okay. So I've already slip stitched and then I'm just going to work my alternate as I have before into the first and then one double crochet into the next using that same smaller hook of the two and the next to the next and in each stitch around and I highly recommend you double check your stitch count. Okay, I am going to finish this round. I will meet you back at the beginning and then we will get into our really fun and easy stitch pattern for the body of the bag and it goes really fast. Okay, I've finished round six. So now what I want you to do is actually keep the right sides up and from the center point you're beginning round one. Fold that in half because this is actually going to be the height of the base of your bag. You kind of have to visually have that in your mind. If you want this more of this solid base higher, you can certainly add one, two, three more rows, however many you want to do. And I think I'm going to go ahead and do one more row on this and then I'm going to finish that round and now we are going to begin the body of our bag. Just remember to go up one hook size if that's the option you choose. And I'm going to do that in just a sec to my 5.5 eye hook. I'm going to change yarn colors. So I am backing out of that last leg of my last double crochet. And then I'm going to bring my tail end through. 
as the last portion of my stitch. And then now I'm going to switch hooks. Okay, leave enough tail. And now I'm going to slip stitch. But if you are staying with the same color, you can just go ahead and slip stitch and do your first beginning stitch. I'm going to tie off the two together in the back to keep those secure. And I'll go back in the end and do that a little more securely, but that is just for now, okay? And then now again, as you did before, you can either chain three or work that alternate double crochet into the first, and then one double crochet into each of the next two stitches. Now you don't necessarily need a stitch marker for this section because the height is very well defined, but if you feel more comfortable doing that, marking your spot, by all means go ahead. Okay, so now we're going to chain one, skip one, single crochet in the next. And then your repeat is chain one, skip one, one double crochet in each of the next three. Oops. Okay. Chain one, skip one, single crochet in the next chain one, skip one, one double crochet in each of the next three. So remember I said this is a multiple of six, so that is your six stitch repeat. Your three double crochets, chain one, single crochet, chain one. Let's do that again. Chain one, skip one, single crochet in the next. Chain one, skip one, one double crochet in each of the next three. Okay, chain one, skip one, single crochet in the next chain one, skip one. You just continue this sequence all the way around up to your last stitch. Here we are back around at the end of round one up to the last stitch and you just chain one, skip the last, and then slip stitch to the top of your beginning stitch to join. Okay, round Two. And again, at the beginning of each round, you're going to do the same. You're going to chain three or alternate double crochet in the first and one double crochet in each of the next two double crochets. So you always will have three double crochets at the beginning. And now all you do is chain three, you skip over the section with the two chains and the single crochet in the middle, and you jump over and place one double crochet in each of these next three double crochets. That is your sequence all the way around. Chain three, double crochet in each of the next three double crochets. That's it. All the way around. Chain three, skipping over the chain, single crochet in the chain, and placing one double crochet in each of the set of three double crochets. And I will meet you back around when you, when you come around here and you finish those last three double crochets, all you do is you just chain three and then slip stitch to join. But I will work that with you as always. Back around at the end of round two, 
I've worked my last three chains after my last set of three double crochet and then I'm just going to slip stitch to the beginning stitch as always and now we begin round three again as mentioned alternate double crochet or chain three in the first one double crochet in each of the next two we are going to chain one skip one chain and work one single crochet into the next which is the center chain in that group of three chains and I want you to go through a, both loops of that chain and not around it because that if you do that it's going to pull up that stitch and create an even wider gap and then your single crochet won't stay as centered and as anchored as it will working through both loops of that um, chain and it's only one stitch in the set of three okay so to recap that worked your set of three double crochet chained one skipped one work one single crochet in the next the center of the three now we're going to chain one again skip the next chain and work one double crochet in each of the next three again easy as that and that is our repeat chain one skip one chain single crochet into the next chain one skip one chain one double crochet in each of the next three double crochets one more time chain one skip one chain single crochet into that middle chain chain one skip the next chain one double crochet in each of the next three work that all the way around and I will see you in our last sequence at the end and work that together here we are already at the end of round three and here I've worked up and through the last set of three double crochets I have the three chains left and all you do here is what we've been doing chain one skip one place that single crochet into the middle chain chain one skip the last chain and slip stitch into the beginning to join the so round four and round five are the same and they're very similar to round three so you do everything the same but instead of single crocheting into a chain we're going to single crochet into the single crochet. Alright, let's go ahead and work that alternate or chain three. One double in each of the next two. Chain one, skip one chain, single crochet into the single crochet. Chain one, skip the next chain one double crochet into each of the next three double crochets that's the sequence that is it chain one let's go ahead and jump into that single crochet and single crochet chain one jump over to the set of three doubles and work one in each okay one more time chain one skip the chain single crochet into the single crochet chain one skip the next chain double crochet into each of the three double crochets alrighty work that around when you get to the end you do just like we did here before you work those three doubles you chain one skip the chain single crochet in the single crochet chain one skip the last chain and slip stitch to the beginning okay 
So I think you've got this by now. I really hope so. It's just what you do all the way around. Work this sequence, then you slip stitch, and then you repeat this row one more time. And then you just repeat rounds two, three, four, and five over and over again to your desired height. Leave just a little bit of room for our two finishing rounds. Those are really easy also. Okay, well I'm going to finish these two rows. I will bring you back. We'll begin again with round two to get you started. I'll recap the others and then you can take it away from there. Back around at the end of round five where I finished my second round of the chaining one and single crocheting into the single crochet. So I chain one again, skip that last chain, and then, as always, slip stitch to the beginning. And then now we're going to begin our four row repeat again. And it's so easy. And, and three rows are very similar. So now I'm just doing my alternate in the first and working my one double crochet in each of the next two. Alright, again round two repeating. This one's a super easy. You just chain three and work a double crochet in each of those double crochets. Skipping over the section where you have your chain, your single crochet, and your chain. So I'm just working into the three double crochets and that's it. Chain three, skip over, and work one double crochet in each of the next three. Chain three. So continue this sequence all the way around. I'll meet you back and recap row three. Okay, I'm back around at the end of our repeating rows now, end of row two. So I'm finished the last sequence, chaining three, skipping over, slip stitching to the beginning, okay, working my alternate, double crochet, one in each of the next two. Now for round three of our four row repeat, Okay. Now on this one, round three, that's where you chain one, you skip one chain, and then you work the single crochet into the center of that set of three chains. Chain one, skip the next, and double crochet in each of the next three. Chain one, skip one chain, single crochet in the next, chain one, skip the next chain, and rounds four and five. Those are the rounds where you chain one, skip one, and you single crochet in the single crochet, chain one, skip the next, work your three doubles, chain one, skip the first chain, single crochet in the single crochet, chain one, skip the next chain, it's rows four and five. And when you've reached your desired height, end on either row four or five. I'm going to go ahead and complete the rest of mine. I will meet you there. We'll finish our two very easy finishing rounds together, crochet the strap, and work our cinch tie. Okay, I'm back. I've finished the height of my work. I completed four repeats, beginning counting the first circle, the little window, so that's one, two, three, four, and then I ended on round four, which gave me two rounds with the single crochet stitches. And that is as high as I wanted to go. You do yours however you like, but having a couple of extra rows gives more stability for the open sections. And as always, just slip stitch and work your alternate or chain three for your first double crochet and 
and one double crochet in each of the next two. And then now we are going to work one double crochet around each chain and into each single crochet. Whereas before we worked the single crochet into the chain, those two loops of the chain, now you can just work around the chain if you like and then into the single crochet into the around the next chain rather and into each of the next three double crochets. So you're just working one double crochet in every stitch and every chain one space all the way around. I will see you back at the beginning and we will do one single crochet round. And you can do more if you like that's up to you. You can do however many more of just the double crochets all the way around. If you want to add more, that's fine to do that. Okay, I will see you back around. Back around at the end of our first finishing round. You see how that evens up the height and it closes up a little bit of the spacing. And now to do that even more, we're going to slip stitch in that first double crochet or equivalent. Now chain one, single crochet into that same stitch and place one single crochet into every double crochet all the way around. That's going to bring those stitches together even more and give more stability along the top where we are going to add our strap. And if you like, depending on how much spacing, how loose or tight the stitches are at the top, you can go back down to that one hook size. If you like, you can always try it, see how it looks. Back around at the end of our second finishing round, the single crochet all the way around. And now just slip stitch into the top of your first single crochet. Chain one, fasten off, leave enough to sew in the ends. Okay, you can do that now or later, that's up to you. And now to begin our strap, first I want you to double check your stitch count. So count all those single crochets around. You should have 90. If for some reason you have one more or less, you can just pull that back a little bit and place two single crochets into one stitch. If you're minus one, if you're over one, then you can single crochet two together as long as you have an even number. And that's important to create the balance of our strap on either side. All right, so now to determine where your center is, smooth out, put your bag flat. You want to make sure particularly your base is flat squared off across the front and sides and that the sides are even. There's no like buckling or like, weird edge on one side. Okay, And then what I do is I just kind of eyeball it to start just to give me a guideline on where my center is. I'm going to gently stretch out the top. I put my finger into, let's go over here so you can see there. Put my finger into the edge. I don't want to stretch so much it overstretches, but just enough so the top is taut and smooth and, and flat. So you do that on both sides. And where the very edge is here, I pinch that off with my finger, and that is where I pop my first stitch marker in. And hopefully I was in camera. Do you see that? I pinch that off with my finger and then I do the same with the other side. I just pull it taut a little, pinch that off and that's where I pop my other stitch marker. And that's going to give you a really uh, good guide. So then now going with the number of 90, divide that by 2 
and in the that gives us 45 and in the 45th stitch across on each side is where our stitch markers go and that should give you 44 stitches in between from stitch marker to stitch marker but not counting the stitch markers. Okay, so you have 44 on one side, 44 on the other, that gives you 88 plus the mark where your stitch marker is, that stitch, 89, and then the second one is 90. So then after your stitch marker is in, and that's just kind of your preliminary placement, go ahead and count your stitches across, again not counting the stitch with the stitch marker, but every stitch thereafter up two, but not including the second stitch marker. Count those stitches. You should have 44 in the same all the way across up to each stitch marker. Now if you are one over or under on the side, so for example, say the stitch marker is one in front. That's going to give me 45 stitches on one side, 43 on the other. So you would just take that stitch marker, subtract one by placing it in one stitch behind. And then the same would be reversed if you have say 43 on this side and 45 on the other. Then you would just move the stitch marker accordingly, subtract or add where you need it. As long as they are even on both sides and as close to those inside edges as you can get so you have a really good balance and placement for your strap. All right, and now to attach our strap I want to let you know you can make that as wide or as narrow as you want. A good average is five stitches across and no matter what the stitch marker is going to be the center of your strap. So I'm going to do the five across. So as you can see, there's my center and I have two to either side. So two, four plus the center is five. If you want to make that wider to seven stitches across, then add one on either side. So you have your center stitch marker plus three on either side or more narrow. You would just have one stitch on either side. I suggest using two strands of yarn and going to your smaller hook size of the two. That's going to depend on the type of yarn, how thick it is. And I'm going to go five stitches wide total. So that would be two over to start from my stitch marker. Bring the two strands through, leave enough tail so you have plenty to sew in and secure that real well. Then I'm going to yarn over and pull all four strands together and cinch that down tight. It's going to lock that in and make that end nice and strong, but I don't want a big like, blob of yarn hanging out on the end either. And then now we're just going to go back into the same stitch and work an alternate double crochet without chaining one. Okay, so that's that single crochet and then now because I'm working with two strands of yarn on that left, those, that left loop in the front, I go through the two strands on the left and make that second single crochet. And then now single I mean double crochet, sorry, into each of the next four stitches. That was one, two, three, and four. And again, you can try with if two strands of yarn, it's too bulky with the smaller hook, you can go up one. Do whatever you like. This is just how I'm doing mine. Alright, so now you turn the work. Make sure your working yarn is behind the stitches. Okay, and then work that alternate double crochet again, just as we've been doing in the body of the work. 
and then one double crochet in each of the next four double crochets across and that's your repeat over and over and over and again make this as long as you like you can make it a cross body shoulder bag a shorter strap to go into the crook of your arm all right again alternate double crochet in the first and one double crochet in each of the next four. So I'm going to go ahead and work mine. And I'm going to go ahead and work the length of my strap. I will meet you there, show you how I attach to the other side. And when you end the length of your strap, finish on the right side of your work so when you bring it over to the other side where your other stitch marker is both sides will be facing in the same direction on the right side all right and then now go ahead and oh yeah and then of course cut your yarn and then what I do <coughs> is oh leave enough length to sew them in so the sides together and I just kind of take the yarn across one side across the other double it up for the length to go in and out all of these strands and then leave enough tail at the end to sew in and then you can bring your yarn through okay, and match this free end of the strap to the stitch marker with that middle stitch so you will have two on each end so match that middle stitch up to the middle stitch marker and if you want to attach that to be sure you don't get off center you can do that okay and then you're going to begin attaching into the second stitch over so everything lines up on both sides and then turn your work and attach it inside out on the wrong side of your work everyone has a different method if you have one you like then do that I'm just going to show you what I came up with so I'm just going to start by inserting the needle through both stitches of my bag and bringing that through until the two sides meet and then I am going to come back through and cross over a little bit because I'm on the edge and I want to go up underneath and catch all the loops of that first stitch if you are working with one strand you'll just have two loops two strands you will have four loops to reinforce this edge I am going to go back over the top of the two loops facing me of the first stitch on the edge and then go down and out through the two loops in the back that are farthest away and now I want to go down inside and catch this inside loop of the first stitch. Don't accidentally cross over to the next stitch because that belongs to the next stitch on the strap. So not on the back loop farthest away but on the loop that's closest to you. See how that one got tucked down a little? There you go. All right, now pull that through and that's serving two purposes to reinforce the strap and to give a seamless join on the outside of the work and now we're going to go over to through the next two stitches on the bag and all the stitches on the strap 
and then I'm going to reinforce in the same way. I'm going to take my stitch marker out now. Don't need that. So go over the top of the loops that are closest to you, down and through the bottom of the loops farthest away, and then catch the loop that's closest to you on your bag. And it's going to bring that inside loop up. So you see you have a seamless join on the right side of your work that is going to most resemble the other side where we attached by crocheting. Alright, another time. Here we go. Through both loops of the bag. down and up through all loops on the strap, back over top the two loops facing you or one loop if you're using a single strand, down and through those two loops farthest away and then go back and catch the inside loop that's closest to you on the back. Pull that through. And two more to go. Through both loops of the bag, all loops on the strap. Over top of the loops closest to you, down and through the loops farthest away. And then catch that inside loop of the back. And one more time. Next two. Through all the loops of your strap. Over top two. Down the back two. Up the inside loop. And then now, you see this creates pretty flat seam on the inside. Just see a little bit of the stitch running through from the bag and you do on the crochet side as well. It's slightly different but to my eye and my opinion it's not enough to be dramatic to think that it looks like a mistake or that they don't go together. And you can see again how the outsides now look the same. You have the same how where I pulled up that loop on the inside it creates a little bit of ridge here just like it did when we crocheted them on together and the rest is virtually seamless you can see just a little bit of the colored yarn running through just like you can on the crocheted side the only other way around that if you want them exactly perfectly the same then you would need to crochet the strap separately and then sew both ends on. This was just my way of coming up with how to best attach the yarn in as much of one piece as possible. So and actually on this end I decided I'm going to go through both loops one more time. Bring that around just to give that some extra security and then I'm going to, so it doesn't tug on the, the edge, it would just put too much stress on that one little loop by itself. And now I'm going to come back through the two loops on the edge. See how that just cinched that down real nicely. And then you can just go ahead and uh, weave in your ends. You can even place a little knot somewhere along the way. That would be invisible. You can take these two strands off, make a square knot, and then put the strands back on your needle and then keep sewing in your ends and tuck that little knot in somewhere also. Okay, so now I'm going to show you just what I do. Very simple way for making that cinch tie. I'm going to put two strands together. You can go with one, you can go with two. Make a slip knot 
leave yourself enough tail maybe the yarns going to fray at the end you want to fix that in such a way help take care of it uh, maybe you want to put extra beads I on that neutral one I decided to macrame the two ends together a little bit so I'm going with two strands and I'm adding this cream color just for a little brightness I think that might look pretty cute and chain try not to do a speed chain here go a little slower so that your stitches are nice and close together and very consistent try to do them without any big spacing in between but not so tight that they're bunched up and say okay I have 90 stitches I'm going to double that number for my chain and then maybe add another 20. It's very easy to take the stitches out or add more to it if you need that. Alright, so I'm going to work my chain and then just easy way that I basically basket weave it through. I just finished a long chain. Now don't cut your yarn. Just pull to have a long loop that loop on your hook, leave your free end down, and then we're going to run it through with the tail end. So that way if you have too many chains you can take them out. Not enough, you can add to it. First we need to find our center. A couple of ways. You can bring your two ends together. Make sure everything matches up the two side and sides of your bag and the ends of your strap and just pull that center taut a little bit just like we did the sides and that should bring you up to the center you can do it that way or you can count across starting with either the first stitch next to your strap on the inside on either the left or the right you have 40 stitches from this first open stitch all the way across to the last so you can just Pick one side or the other, count 20 across, place a stitch marker in your middle. Now the number of stitches going across the center is if you've worked the five double crochet width strap. If you're working the seven or three width, then you will need to count the center stitches across the top of your bag, divide those in half, and then place your stitch marker. And now to feed your cord around the bag, you're going to start where your stitch marker is in that center placement and to the corresponding stitch that's direct center. You're going to begin by inserting your yarn needle in between that middle stitch and the one to the left of it. You're going to work down and up one across the next three stitches and down up the next. So your sequence will be down one across three, down and up one across three. Okay, And pull that through. I suggest a little at a time and keeping your cord flat as you go. You can pull it through all the way. You'll just have to be careful because it naturally wants to twist. And after I've made my length, I will leave the end portion approximately where I want that placement to be on my bag. That's up to you. I've decided to let that hang the braid itself and then maybe a little tail below that up to the second window from the base but I'm using a bead and so I don't need extra length like if you're just going to make a tie or a bow or something you're going to need extra length to make up that bow but also keep in mind that once you cinch the tie in that's going to create extra length so depending how long you want it you may not want it to to the end extend below your bag. All right, that just gives you a little guide to go with and then you just continue on and before 
I began each next sequence of weaving my cord through, I just make sure it's not twisted. I pull the tail end and the base of the needle up to the base of my slip knot and I hold those two together with my fingers and that helps to keep it flat also. So then I look okay where I left off next. So I went through down and up the one double crochet. Now I'm going to go across three, down and up in the next, across the top of the next three, down and up the next, and pull another set through. And then I just repeat that all the way around. And don't pull it tight, keep a little slack in there so that you can turn it back over if it wants to flip. And also as you work it, keep your work flat too. You don't want to have big gapes in it or have it be cinched in tight either. Just nice and smooth and flat going across. And you just keep working that around and then you should come up. to the right of that center stitch in between the center and the stitch to the right. Right through there. Okay. And then that will give you a post in the center to where you can anchor your tie or anchor your bead that will where it will come up to when it slides. I'm back around and I have fed my cord down and through the last stitch which brings me back to the center with the cord on either side of that center double crochet and stitch marker. And look at that, how about that? My sides turned out even. Got lucky on that one but you know it's okay because like I said before you can always add or take away. And then once you're satisfied with the length, how it looks going across the top, go ahead, cut your yarn, leave yourself a nice long tail. Try to cut the same on both sides. You can always even those up later. And then what I do is I use my same large eye yarn needle, put all my strands through, slide my bead up through all the thicknesses. Whatever bead you're using, make sure that you have enough space to fit your two cords to where it can slide up without putting too much tension and friction on your yarn to prevent that from fraying and fuzzing but also you want it snug enough where it's not going to slide down. And then to secure the bottom, you can do a series um, of the two strands together, just some square knots, left over right, right over left, do a few of those, left over right, right over left and then just cinch, cinch those as you go. It's not going to look sloppy like that. I'm just not cinching mine tight because I'm going to take that out. And then you can just let your tail ends hang down. You can also instead of one bead you can do two smaller beads but again make sure that the whole accommodates the size and you can just put one on one side, slide it up. I've done that in my hats before. Put one bead on one, one on the other and then I just take the yarn and loop it around and bring that loop up flush with the top and, and make a bunch of knots there. You can do that with two beads, one on each side, or one large bead. As long as you're not, you do that over and over again until it's thick enough 
to make sure your bead doesn't slide off. Okay, well I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you'll make this bag and have a lot of fun with it. I'm very pleased. I think it turned out great, if I may say so myself. I put my heart and soul into this one. <laughs> All right, well take care everyone. Have a great time. Stay well, and I will see you soon. Bye for now.